uh, we're here on the 12th of the second Thursday to launch our new book, Watchmen Warriors for Revival. And the Lord has put us on a new mandate this year. He's been preparing us for us. And uh, so it's great that you can come and, and join and, and listen to just what God's laid on our hearts for this year. Uh, so why don't we pray? Mm. Lord, thank you. We love you, Jesus. Mm. We honour you. We welcome you, Lord. It's all for you. And we thank you for this new adventure, for this new journey you're taking us on. Lord, we look to you. We follow you. Lord, and we just surrender to what you have us do. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome your glory realm. And we thank you, Father. We thank you that we can live and move and have our being from your glory realm as we move forward in this new season. In Jesus' name. Lord, at the outset of you, Lord, we just say you reign and we give you our lives again. Lord, we surrender all we have again. Lord, we say everything for you, everything for you. We again lay it down for you, Jesus, and we say you reign. You reign over our affairs. You reign over the affairs of, that we govern, Lord. You reign over our sphere of influence, Lord, and you reign in our nation. You reign in the nations, Lord. You reign in the great south lands of the Holy Spirit. We declare, Jesus, you reign. You reign, and we put you first and centre, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to mm. say it's you first again, Lord. It's you first and no one else. It's you that we follow. It's you that has first place in our lives. Lord, we declare that you are first mm. and that you will reign. Mm. Lord, you will take up your authority and you will reign. And we give you glory and honour. And praise. Angela, can you just blow the show for us and make yes. a way? Just declare the way is open. <laughs> It's a new day for us. It's a new day for what you're doing, Lord, across the nation and the nations. Well, now, can you come and share what time you woke up this morning? Yeah, I. Um, That's yeah. right. I actually woke up at twelve twelve, and it's the twelfth of February today, and I felt the Lord say, "It's it's a new beginning. It's a new day." Not only a new day, but we have come into a new authority today. It's a new level in our spiritual appointment. So I decree that we will rise and we will stand and we will break through into our new God-given authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand and receive that? Lord, we stand up. Yes. We stand up into our new God-given authority, Lord. We step up, yes. Lord, into the twelves, Lord, into governmental yes. authority, Lord. Yes. Amen. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. You know, if you had any history with us, it was all about the 11, the 11, the 11. And, um, and we always knew that the 11s would transition. And I guess I've been waiting to get to the 12s. <laughs> so I was very excited for what Linnell said. Very excited about today. Please have a seat. Very excited about today because we, 
when we've done this last 12 months for those who are with us, we talked about 180 days of, uh, of the end of all flesh and moving into a new thing and we spent 180 days in that. And um, Angela had a dream about a big bullseye and it was 180 centimetres across. It was a big target that was 180 centimetres across. But then the bullseye was 12.2. And we knew that today we were going to go for the bullseye. So this is our new 12.2 today. And, and so I was very excited when Linnell said, I woke up at 12, 12, on the 12. Can you? So, There's 12 you. people in the room. <laughs> God knows what he's doing, doesn't he? <laughs> he knows what he's doing. It's very exciting. Has anyone got any, like, uh, just a quick prophetic word or anything they saw as we were worshipping that you you wanted to share? Just come stand beside me. Just anything that you saw in the spirit while we were worshipping that's for today. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, yesterday I saw something, but God showed me a little bit more today. And um, yesterday I saw. Yesterday um, I saw myself on the on an arrowhead, and I was looking at the horizon and waiting for the arrow to be released. And um, I knew the Holy Spirit was holding the bow with the arrow. And then this morning during the worship, I was up above the South Pacific in the atmosphere and I saw that arrow released. Like it was heading straight for, for um, where we were. And I saw all of us, even though I was up there watching this, I saw all of us on that arrowhead and we were... We were dancing as if we had joy in the war. And I just, it just it came straight up and went straight into God's hand. And I knew that he was saying, right, I've got you. Um, I'm, I've launched you. I've got you. You're in my hand. And he gave me a word yesterday. I'll just quickly read it. It's not long. Uh, you are an arrowhead movement of watchman warriors. You are my lightning rod shot from my hand. Let me fashion you and set you at the critical point of impact from heaven to earth like lightning bolts. And I remembered Zechariah 9, um, 13 to 17 again. And then he said, it's not by might and not by power, but by my spirit. So, Lord, we thank you that you launched us today, that we are a movement of watchmen warriors like your lightning rods, Lord, we thank you that you will send us to the impacting places in the spirit to war for revival in the South Pacific. And uh, it's not by our might nor our power, but by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That's just awesome. You know, um, I when we talked about the launch, I had in the vision, you know, great big launches, you know, razzmatazz, everything, you know, and yet the Lord kept on saying, no, no, stay small, do small, and, and, and he reminded me that everything he does, every new thing he starts, he starts with the seed. And he starts, he started in a manger. Yeah, and I was I was excited because as we were worshiping, I suddenly realised that in the in the manger it was the angels when 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 Jesus was born. It was the angels that announced him, and I don't know if you heard the angels, but I certainly saw them announcing this. But it's it's only in the small. It starts in the small, and that's. I'm excited that there's 12 because God again knows what he's doing and he and He fashions us and he's been fashioning us in the secret place. So this is almost like, this. he still said it was a launch because there's a coming forth. There's a coming forth into the new. So 
thank you for being with us. Thank you for being here. And um, so I, I just, especially for those online, I envisage that we'll be here till, say, 11.30ish, perhaps, we might have an early mark. Um, and I'll share the vision. Then um, the team will um, share a further expansion of that at different places. And then I'll share the culture and strategy that he's given us. And then I'm going to ask Bruce to share he, a word of, he, I've asked him to share a word of encouragement and apostolic degrees over us. And um, then we're just going to finish with praise and, and, and end with thanksgiving, okay? And I'll introduce the team. Um, I, we've, we've had this small team online that we've been developing this. So it's been Angela, um, Lou, oh, and actually, Pat, yeah, I guess no one on, you can see Angela sitting here, but that's okay. We've got Angela, we've got Marguerite, Lamel, and Tadian, and they're all prophet watchmen in their own rights. And they all bring something different. And we seem to each have a different aspect of that and, and fly together with that. And so that's been really good. Um, Angela just has an ability to oversee everything and gets to the critical point. Marguerite's our teacher extraordinaire. And uh, Linnell. Linnell is our mother in Israel. She's our Israel specialist. And we've also got Tatiana that flies in the heavenlies and lets us know all what's happening up there. <laughs> so, so I'm going to start with sharing the vision. And I've tried to get it um, in great big clear lettering so it can be seen online. Here we go. There we go. So I want to share the vision because the, the Lord told me that, or he, he spoke to us, it was during these 180 days, and um, he said, it's time for the fulfilment of Smith Wigglesworth's prophecy to us over Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. He great South Man's voice. Well, over Australia, the Lord said to me. And, and I remembered Daniel 9-2, and Daniel 9-2 was when Daniel, during the first year of his reign, Daniel learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So, and so I turned to the Lord and God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. So Daniel saw that the 70 years was up and it was time. And I just felt the Lord say, this prophecy has been decreed and decreed and it's decreed. And now it is really time for it to come to pass. And Daniel fasts and he prays and he, what, what, and he prays, Oh Lord hear, oh Lord forgive, oh Lord listen and act for your own sake. Do not delay, oh my God, for your people and your city bear your name. And Dekiros prophesied over us that the great Southlands over this whole, that they were the great Southlands over the Holy Spirit. We, we, we bear his name. And I just felt him say, now is the time for those that bear his name to experience the promised revival. It's time. And so what were, was, what were the prophetic words? Um, so what were the prophetic words? It was actually quite hard to find something. There was nothing written out from what Smith Wigglesworth said in 1922. And that's the... Another exciting thing about this, this month is the 100-year anniversary of Smith Wigglesworth's first visit to Australia. Um, but there, had, there was no actual records. There's records of what he did and the healings, etc., but no actual records of the prophetic word. There was a little bit came out in 2011, but it was never confirmed by anyone. 
the closest confirmation I could find was this from Billy Grimm, was from um, Billy Grimm talking to David Duplessis, who was known as Mr. Pentecost in 1967. And she she said, I did hear from David that Wigglesworth said the last great outpouring of the Holy Spirit before Jesus comes would be in Australia, New Zealand and the islands. And that's why I've said we're watchmen warriors for Australia, New Zealand and the South Pacific. Um, because, of course, Ferdinand de Quiros in 1606, um, on the day of Pentecost, declared that he takes possession of these lands and he called them the great southern land of the Holy Spirit. And that always and forever to, the, to this end, that in all the lands, the holy and sacred evangel may be preached and zealously and openly. And so we're going to see that come to pass. And then there was a girl called Jeanette Dale in 2015, basically prophesied the very things that Wigglesworth prophesied at another time. Um, and, and she said, we are about to see the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. The spirit and the word will kiss there will be explosions of glory and great harvests of souls will be gathered. It will start in New Zealand and Australia because she's a Kiwi, so when the New Zealand's prophesied it, it, New Zealand is first, when the Australians prophesied, Australia's first. And I guess if there's, I haven't seen any prophecies from the islands, but I'm sure when they prophesied, the islands are first. Um, and then this year in 2020, uh, Anna. Boland, who is a, a apostle um, and was at the Prophetic Council, the Australian Prophetic Council, she prophesied that there's a new generation rising in the South Pacific. And she talked about what the enemy has tried to shut down and stagnate. And I think we felt that ourselves in the spirit. There's been an, an attempt to shut things down and stagnate what God's doing. She says, God is about to open a well, a volcanic eruption in the spirit, she called it. And she's prophesied Joel too. And, and, a, and a, there's an army coming out of the South Pacific, New Zealand and Australia. And she said, our First Nations people are going to rise across the nations a well is opening in our land, not just a well, an ocean with healing for the land. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting to, to hear because, of course, you know, just off Tonga, it was the day after she prophesied it, the mm -hmm. volcanic eruption erupted in Tonga. And if you look at Tonga, I was looking at the map of the... Australia, New Zealand, the islands, and if you look from the edge of Western Australia to the timeline, out to the edge of the South Pacific, and from from about the bottom of New Zealand there up to the top of, it's kind of, it's Melanesia, it's Micronesia, Melanesia, and, and so it's kind of the top of Melanesia, Polynesia, that's kind of the, the area we're in that I would relate to as the South Pacific. And, and Tonga that is right in the heart, right in the centre, the very centre of that is where the oh, okay. volcanic, the volcano erupted. So what the enemy means for harm, God, is using for his glory. So, yes, it's a display of a volcanic eruption in the spirit, I believe. Um, and then uh, in 2021, it, I saw an angel, and this angel was dressed like one of the Polynesian warriors, and he had one of those robes slung across his, his shoulders with... One of the rows 
sliced around his shoulder, tied up at the corner. You know, one of those robes that the the chiefs wear, and and it was all full of feathers, and, but they were all earthy coloured feathers. And the Lord said, "It's the the colour of the skins for, of people that are over Australia, New Zealand, and the mm -hmm. islands, and they're my warriors. And this is a warrior angel." And I decreed 21 that the army was rising. And then this year, I heard the Lord say it was like in the days of Noah, that he said it's not torrents of destruction, it's torrents of blessing. Mm -hmm. And and when it says when Noah was 600 years old, all the underground waters erupted from the earth and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the, mm -hmm. the sky. And I felt the Lord say, there's going to be eruptions from underground, from the things already sown, past revivals, mm. past moves of God, Amen. anywhere that there's been moves of the Spirit that have died, that they've gone into the ground and it's going to erupt again across Australia, New Zealand and the islands. And there's been revivals, especially in the islands, over the years. And, I, and there's going to be deluge of blessings wow. coming down. So we are on the brink of revival, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and the wells of salvation spring forth, and that's wells of salvation mm -hmm. springing forth out, out of every believer. Wow. Every believer is a well of salvation. Mm -hmm. And they're going to spring forth, and we're going to see those wells of salvation begin to flow across our nation. And, and the goodness of God fall. Um, but traditionally, you know, Lou Ingalls says, every move of God starts with a move of prayer. Mm. And there's been a move of prayer, but the, the prophetic word says that this is going to be the last great revival before the Lord, that ushers in the coming of the Lord. But that says that it must be sustained. And we know from revival history that revivals mostly last three, six months to three years and they fade. So if this revival is going to begin and continue, this needs not just a sustained prayer to see the revival launched forth, it needs a sustained prayer that will continue the revival on and I felt the Lord say that's why you need an army there's been prayer the revival's on its way but I don't want just a revival that's here as a flash in the pan and dies again this is a last end an end day revival and I need my warriors and I need an army to move forward in this place I need an army across Australia New Zealand and the islands to sustain the revival, an army of prayer warriors that will pick it up, pick up the torch and run with it, pick up revival and run with it. And so that's the, that's what the Lord said. So raise up an army of prayer warriors. And he told me, raise them up online. Use the technology available to you. That's why we worshipped with the technology because that's what we're going to be doing online. We're going to have to use online worship. We're going to have to use manufactured worship. And the Lord has been teaching us how to use that and yet still find ourselves in his glory realm. Mm -hmm. It's a new art. It's a different, it's a different way. It's a new way. Mm -hmm. But it's the way that we're going to be able to connect across the nations. It's a way that there's going to we can have agreement from many sectors of Australia and, and, and New Zealand and the islands, not just once a year when we can get together, not just once every five years when we can pull a great big conference together, but if we use the technology we have, we can be making decrees and having agreement across the, uh, the great south lands of the Holy Spirit almost day in and day out if we want to. And I feel like that's what the Lord's going to use. And I believe there's even 
newer technologies that are going to make it simpler and and but the Lord said, so do it simple. So we're going to do it the simplest way possible. Make it easy for everyone to that wants to be involved to be involved. So that's what he showed us to do. So that's why we're launching a new look company of warriors to come together and we want to train together, worship together, pray together and fulfil this mandate to watch over, call forth, encourage, protect and decree the coming revival in Australia and the great Southlands of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so how are we going to do that? <laughs> okay, big question. So Big voice. Big voice, I'm trying. How about water? Uh, in order to sharpen our insight, and stay in God's prophetic timing with this endeavour. We've learned from experience and we've learned firstly to watch the nation of Israel because we know that we've experienced that as the firstborn children of God go in the natural, so often we see that that's how the spiritual children of God that's what's happening in the Church of Jesus Christ. Very much we can see prophetic, prophetic understanding in that. So we're going to be watching the nation of Israel. We're going to be watching the Hebrew calendar and Mark is going to expand on this because every month there's a new prophetic understanding. And like I said, Mark's going to expand on that for us. Um, we've also learned that before you do anything in the spirit, you sow in the natural. And before we do anything in the spirit, we sow into natural Israel as well. And uh, again, Lenelle is going to tell us a little more about that and why we do that and how we do it. And, um, and then, of course, the other thing is that those who bless Israel will themselves be blessed. And the Lord showed me that the mandate in Australia and the blessing on Australia has come because Australia showed, sowed her first and her best. I mean, this was in God's plan since, you know, before time. And Dakiras called us the great Southlands of the Holy Spirit. But then we went into Israel in 1901 and, and basically freed Israel and, and made way for Israel to be established as a nation in, in the First World War there. And Israel was liberated for the first time in 2,000 years. The land was coming back to Israel. And, but we did, we sowed our first and our best. We became a nation in 1901. By 1917, we sent our, our young 16 and 17 year olds to war. And they gave their lives in them. And the blood of the Australians still sits in this trial today. And God has not forgotten. And God is no man's debtor. And he said, you've sowed your first and your best into the natural. So the blessing of the spirits come being poured out. And um, that's been our own experience as we've, we've prayed and been a company of prayer warriors over the years. Um, the Lord's called us to sow into other places for this. He, he taught us how to do prayer strikes in nations and he, he told us to go into Cambodia. He told us to go go into the Pearl Nations, Cambodia, the Pearl of Asia, Hong Kong, the Pearl of the Orient, Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. And then he said, go into the Pearl of the whole earth, which was Israel. And we sowed a prayer strike in there. And then he said, now that you you killed your lion and your bear and you've, got, you've, you've taken down your Goliath, now I can give to you your inheritance, Australia, New Zealand and the islands of the sea. That's been our, our heritage, that's our history and that's what brings us to this point, that, that God just says now is time. He's put it all together, he's been working with it and then he takes it 
in the non-tube, the varimal, the, to die, and then he starts with the seed again, and the way he go again. And I believe that's what he's doing right now. Okay. Okay, so on that basis, we've come to this place and um, and set the other thing we found vital in all our doing, in all our playing, is the importance of First Nations people. And again, you know, it's going to expand on that. Um, but it's the First Nations people that... The Lord so it told me very clearly when we did a press strike in Australia in 2017, you must have agreement with the First Nations people. And we'd done that all across the nations and hadn't realised it. And then he said it again in 2017. You have to have agreement because they have the authority in the land and they will be, have the authority to bring healing to the land. And so we always do things in agreement with our First Nations people. We don't have anyone on our team, but we have someone that's very close to us, a couple of apostles and prophets, our own Katie Dunstan, Nathan Seddon. They, they've done stuff with us in the past, and I'll be calling on you, Katie, to do stuff with us again in the future and to release the sound of... of and the native Australian as well as the New Zealand, the islands of the sea, the rich cultures, the rich heritages, the rich yeah, inheritance that the, in, the First Nations people have in their own lands. You know, that God is, wants to release that sound to bring healing to the land and it's necessary to sustain revival. So we will always do something and, and include the First Nations people. Okay, so uh, I think I just hit the bar twice. And I don't know back. how we go back. There's a side arrow down the bottom. There's no side arrow down the bottom. Of your computer there is. No, not on this one. <laughs> okay, I'll escape it. There you are. Now I can go back. Okay, I'll make it big again. No, play. Play, sure. Cross, cross. Okay. There. Play again. There we are. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so our goals. <laughs> We're nearly there. Um, Marguerite's got us really well organised, so we have goals, we have mandates, we, we're all sorted, but for today, goals are enough. So we're going to activate and mobilise this army of watchmen and warriors in companies across the nations of the Great Southland. The Lord called us a company. Oh, sorry, wrong one again. Okay. Side arrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just says goals then. Goals yeah, came up then. Yeah. I don't know why that's down here. Okay, I've got a few goals. I don't think these are the ones. I'm sorry. So let's just stick with our goals and we'll go on to culture meet later. Okay, so slide our, before culture. So, so we do have some goals in this, and that's to activate and mobilise not just our company but companies across the Great Southlands of the Holy Spirit. Our armies are full of companies, specialist companies, and so we want to activate specialist companies across the Great Southland and the Holy Spirit. We want to release strategic prayer and governmental decrees that shift the church and the nations into revival, harvest, reformation and transformation. Transformation. It's to provide a platform for watchmen, prophets and warriors to pray in agreement, share insight and encouragement. It's to release strategic prophetic words and dreams to give direction, information, inspiration 
to mobilise watchmen and prayer warriors in each of the nations. And, um, and it gives us a platform where, that when necessary, we can pull these companies together to agree in prayer and move forward. Um, and so we want to establish that with this very small image, God has big plans. Okay, so now we will move on to the, to the, or later we'll move on to the strategies, but right now, um, hit play. What? What? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. How? We're learning all about technology. Okay. You can go hit play on the top of the screen, Cheryl, so we can see it. There we go. Okay. okay. So you've got, you're on to how now. Okay. So Honey. We did how. We did that. So. So. So we're on to culture. And. Um, and I would like the girls to to share, I'm going to introduce the team and get them to fill out um, some of those things I missed. So, Marguerite, do you want to come up and tell us how we're going to do this? And we might just shut this down now, is that best? Or is it distracting? Just leave it there. Just leave it there. Okay, Marguerite. Mm -hmm. You can close your laptop if you want to. Close the If you want to. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to explain very quickly. That's why I'm, I'm going to read this rather fast. Um, why we use the Hebrew calendar as a prophetic timeline and look prophetically at each month and how this forms a basis um, of prophetically moving the great surplus of the Holy Spirit into revival. So here we go. Alignment is key. As watchmen, we must look to see in the Spirit, listen to hear God's prophetic voice and come into alignment with His divine order. Um, also with his purposes and his timing. So gaining understanding of God's order in the cycles of the Hebrew calendar months, as well as the 12 tribes that are linked to them, enables us to align prophetically with his timeline and brings us into position in his redemptive kingdom plan. There are cycles of blessing. Understanding the Hebrew tribes and months are important. The Lord designed time with a built-in blessing for us to claim and walk in. So knowing the tribes and divinely aligning in time with God's calendar, we will discover how to find our position in God's kingdom and how to war effectively for our inheritance and destiny and walk in those blessings. So recognising which tribe, you, you can actually recognise which tribe you um, personally identify with, and that helps us to understand our strengths and our weaknesses, and how to overcome and avoid the pitfalls that each of the tribes had tendencies to fall into. So prophetically, this alignment will impact the critical times in which we live. So each new moon begins a new month in the Hebrew calendar, and it's considered a new prophetic season. So as we carefully study these tribes and months, we can pray and ask the Lord for the following things. To motivate and equip us to shift our mindsets, to think as he thinks, in order to understand the fullness of how he operates. Also to show us how to tap into God's blessings that are resident in each new prophetic season, that's each new month and thrust us into a life of increase, multiplication, and fulfilment of destiny. That sounds good. Mm. 
Also, we can um, ask him to establish new patterns in our own lives that align us with God's cycles of appointed times. Alignment in this way is key to gaining God's perspective of the prophetic time and season. Also, to identify the tribe's callings and destiny and grasp the ta tactical strategies that God gave them to be victorious in battle. So all these things help to move us forwards into a realm of greater revelation and glory. And as we apply his word, it creates a new level of wholeness in us so that when he speaks to us, our faith rises up and we start to see through his eyes. As we gain the strategies to become rightly aligned and walk in his timing for advancement, our redemptive prophetic call will be activated and the prophetic anointing can flow. Aligning with and applying the concepts and the characteristics that are found in these months ensures that we remain under that portal of blessing that opens over us as we enter into God's redemptive plan through the monthly cycles of blessing, we are positioned to reverse losses, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. war for covenantal rights, mm -hmm. to secure the boundaries of our destiny, mm -hmm. and to possess our inheritance. Mm -hmm. when, when we ask, then the wind of the Spirit will blow afresh on us. He'll sanctify us, purify us, and bring us into His presence, into God's presence. We must learn to carry his presence and glory to break through and triumph over the enemy in our present and our future wars. So prophetically, we can also recognize the angelic highway that's forming between heaven and earth and see the angelic hosts that are working on our behalf. So the, the most important thing, the other most important thing is that destiny is key to the prophetic timeline. Aligning and prophetically functioning this way forms a basis for us to recognize God's prophetic timeline and it keeps us moving forwards to realize our destiny. So now is the time for us, as Cheryl was saying, to restore our inheritance and step forwards on the path to fulfill our destiny aligned properly and in right time to prophetically move these great south lands of the Holy Spirit mm. into revival. So I'll just pray mm. a prayer yes. now. Father of glory, in Jesus' name, we purpose to know you more intimately and to watch on the wall over the nations of the South Pacific. Teach us to think as you think and enter into the cycles of time that you have ordained for us. Lord, in this new era and prophetic season, move us forwards and gather us to form your great army of watchmen warriors. Strengthen us, Lord, with joy in the war to contend and see the victory for revival to come forth more powerfully than it ever has to bring in this harvest of souls as our inheritance and for us to fulfil our destiny to be the great south lands of the Holy Spirit. Today, we align with your will and purposes in time. And we say, align, 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 Watchmen Warriors, for this prophetic yes. season. Take up your positions on your assigned walls. Stand under the portal of blessing that God has opened over us and receive the blessings that will mature us and propel us into the fullness of our destiny and call. Holy Spirit, come and flow through us with prophetic insight. We declare your kingdom comes and your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And we decree revival is breaking forth in a greater measure across the great south lands of the Holy Spirit in the South Pacific region. Amen. Can you come and share as well, please? Fantastic. 
Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Cheryl's asked me if she'd like to talk about Israel. So, simply, why, why Israel? Um, and I think it's really quite simple. God made a covenant with Abraham. In Genesis, we read chapter 12, says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And it's, it's continued. We see that continuing right through until this, this time because God is a covenant-keeping God. His word still stands now, today, as it did back then. It, it doesn't change. God is not a God that changes his mind. In Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 8, it says, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were great in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you and because he would... Keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So you see, God made a choice over Israel. He made a choice over Abraham first, but he made that choice of God making that choice that Israel is important to God, then it has to be important to us. You know, when I went to Israel with Bruce and Cheryl the first time in 2014, I did not expect that how God would apprehend me in my thinking or my feeling toward the nation of Israel. And I've been privileged to go in five times now with Bruce and Cheryl um, on prayer strikes and when God gets you, he gets you for Israel. It's true. So, you know, but it but it comes with, I believe, a heart attitude. And an example of this is in Ruth. And I want to read what Ruth said when she came back with Naomi. She said, she said in Ruth 1, 16, it says, Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. So Ruth chose to give herself to Naomi, to her people. She honoured Naomi. She obeyed her. She sacrificed a lot to to come with Naomi, and she loved a lot. But it was all part of a much bigger picture. She became a part of the lineage of Jesus. She became a part of the kingdom of God, which came to pass and is still coming to pass. And it's just like we can be a part of everything as well in whatever way whether it's naturally or spiritually, we are a part of it. It all counts, even the little things. We have to remember that it doesn't seem if it seems little, it still counts. It's all part of the puzzle. And as we do our part, whether it's big or small, then the nations, the blessings will flow to the nation's end, to Israel and to also to us individually as well. And as Cheryl always says, as go, so goes Israel, goes the rest of the world. And when Bruce and Cheryl did Shift the Nation in 2017, we began at the heart of Australia, at Uluru. And that is there where we need to begin as well because it's got to come back to how our heart attitude, how 
I mean, and we have to change our thinking at times, but we still got to have that heart attitude. Just like Ruth, and then after we were at Uluru, we did the gates of the nation, and then we ended up um, at the hill of government in Canberra. But as Chuck Pierce always says, Judah must go first. So praise and worship goes first, and with praise and worship, it releases the sound and prepares the way for what God wants to break open and release over the atmosphere. When we were at Uluru and Shift the Nation, we had praise and worship, and it was led um, by one of our Indigenous uh, apostles, Nathan Sneddon, which was very powerful and just opened the way for the whole of Shift the Nation. And we did see results after Shift of the Nation um, in our federal election, and we saw miraculous results. And I praise God for those mm-hmm. results. Recently, as Cheryl has already said, already said, we've had powerful words spoken over Australia and the South Pacific Islands at the Australian Prophetic Summit um, by Ada Oland and by our another of our arts own prophets, Kate Dunstan. So I really believe that bracket anointing, and even as the Lord woke me at 12.12 this morning on the 12th, you know, we've, we've broken mm. through. We're mm. at that new yes. level. Mm. But it's rising, but we have to feel mm. it. Can we capture that? Mm. Capture that. Rise with it. Mm. Let's pray. Yes. Father, mm. just as in the beginning, you spoke the world mm. in to being by the sound of your voice. Mm-hmm. I decree that the sound of your voice vibrates through Israel, mm-hmm. it vibrates through Australia, mm-hmm. and through the South Pacific Islands. Mm-hmm. We decree that you are the great mm-hmm. I am, I am. Mm-hmm. The Lord told me yesterday when we were having our Zoom meeting, he said, it's time to roar. Mm-hmm. And as you roar, my oil will rise out of your innermost being and start to flow. Flow to your families, flow to Australia, flow to the nations, flow to Israel. So he said, don't hold back, but it's time to roar. So it's time to roar! Hallelujah! Still soaking in. Yeah. Yeah. Life. So good. Okay. Um. Cheryl asked me to share Jubilee. Uh, basically, end of last year, I realized um, this year, 5782, it's a Shemitah, you not know, like every seven years cycle, Shemitah. And then I just, another thing I realized uh, <coughs> this year, I hit my 50. So I'm 50 years old. And then I said, oh, 50 is the year of Jubilee. And they, oh, and then we have Shemitah and then I have my own Jubilee. I'm like, oh yes, that's my year. You know how many Jubilee you can have in your entire life? I don't know. But, <laughs> so I take it as very fresh. <laughs> yes, so. And then I just start to uh, look at Jubilee, you know, the more I read, you know, I, I do a lot of like different, but basically in Chinese, obviously. And then I realized the Jubilee, it's, it's, it's you, know, you know, like everyone knows, like free you, like if you are a slave, you, you get free and you are dead or free, that kind of blessing. So like never happened in my life i never have that thought like oh really that you know what i lost can literally turn to me 
So the more I think, and then I just realized, well, in the last year, we've been 380 days and we talk about a lot of different revivals, right? Like um, uh, two years ago, the 2nd of 2nd, 2020, the Super Bowl, you know, that kind of things. The prophesy come back like after 50 years, a little half century. The, uh, is it Bob John? The, the, the prophecy about the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You come back. That's the first thing made me feel like jubilee, rely, you know, kind of connecting to revival. And then back to 2021 20, last year when Prince, um, Prince Philip died, one of the prophets in America, I think his name is Priest, Priest Lee, someone said, when he passed away and the revival to little you come. So that hit me again, another revival. So when we come to early this year, when I pray into the my Jubilee, I just feel like Jubilee is only one year, but revival is the continuous state, continuous it's a con- condition, like a continuous condition of Jubilee. So mm. I, I just feel good. like, yeah, that's it's really good. That it is revival, you know, um, Luke 4, 18, literally say, um, Jesus will give, uh, the, proclaim the year of Jubilee to us. That's in Chinese Bible. So, and that's everyone using that word for revival. So I really believe from this year, especially from not my personal 50 years old, <laughs> I mean, for, from the new era, revival definitely will come just because um, I boldly to declare just because I had my 50 (laughs) and I believe revival just started from now on (laughs) that's that's what I simply believe because revival is the continuous state of jubilee so we can have Revival from today, from this year, and yeah, that continues awesome. lasting until Jesus comes. Amen. Release that. Yes. Release okay. that. My daughter says revivals here act like it. Yes, <laughs> yes. And yeah, obviously, um, uh, when I want to, you know, I, 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 I ask her, how can I prepare for that? How can I release the jubilee? You know, when I ask that, Lord just ask me. Just come, come back to a child, you know, like childlike faith. You need that because we, I understand from now on we are facing a lot of different challenges like new technique and, you know, a lot of things change. So basically, I feel like we just need to go back to, you know, very simple, just like a child. We have that childlike faith. Ask Lord to just come back to the simple way. And we can see. The great revival, we can see will come. And I asked, well, how can I, you know what, it's childlike faith, you know. And the Lord just asked me, um, what do you want now? You know, if you're a child, what do you want? I simply said, I want pancakes. <laughs> I want pancakes. You know, very simple, because I do want pancakes. <laughs> I haven't had pancakes for a while. I realized that, you know, I want pancakes. When I said that, I, I sensed that pink in front of me, right? I was like, yeah, I'm good, I feel good. And then I saw, um, I would say, the, the, the maple serum comes, mm-hmm. you know, the cream comes. So I was like, oh, yeah, when we ask Father the pancakes, Father doesn't only give you pancakes, right? <laughs> he will give you more than only pancakes. Anything you like, anything, whatever you like, the creams or butter or peanut butter or all sort of <laughs> toppings like berries or nuts, or whatever. That's our Father. So we don't remember when we ask for the child life faith. Don't forget the joy. I think that's Holy Spirit try to remind me when we ask the our childlike faith. Don't forget the joy because that's why you know when you you know, I have a faith. I have a faith for asking for pancakes, but God always give you more. Keep <laughs> always give you more. Keep you you know always in a very high standard of the joy. 
you know what the heck it is. Amen. So, <laughs> Amen. Release that so yes, let's release it. Yes, Father, we ask you right now to release that anointing of jubilee, to release that jubilee anointing, release, free us, free us, free us. Just give us the very simple childlike faith. And we restore our, you know, the children's like, uh, like what I mentioned before. When children can eat all sort of cakes just because they have a very <laughs> good uh, metabolism. No, store us, store us. Go back to the divine metabolism. Change our mindset. Change our mindset. You know, for how long we could not act like a child? We just pretend we are very responsible to our questions. No, we go back to the true father. We. Go Go back to the true who we are. We just want to be the child of God. And Lord, release yes. Heavenly Father, release that anointing of Jubilee, or you call that yes. Jubilee anointing, yes. and release the uh, childlike faith to us, and release the joy, the divine joy from yes, heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> Which is exactly what, you know, we always say there's got to be joy in the house of prayer. And this is a new thing and it's a new day. And so it is, it's got to be a childlike faith. That's awesome. So, and I, then I asked Tatiana, because she couldn't be here with us, uh, if she would give an input as well. And she she just gave me a prophetic word so this is it she said the season that lays ahead of us the lord showed me a bright future in front of us a season of double portion but not only a double portion it's the year of open heaven new dimensions of glory the spirit of glory and, and the spirit of then the son of the hope of glory so sorry um, a season of face-to-face -face with God and His glory. Amen. It's the Amen. glory of God, the Father of glory, the Son of hope of His glory, Amen. and the Spirit of glory yes. as they unite Amen. together in love, hope, and faith to ignite a new vision, yes. a new revelation, and the Word and the Spirit rising among us. And she says, we built on the Father's vision and carry the DNA of God through apostolic government, the watchman voice and the family unite with a new mind, new ability and new possibilities. Mm. So all the new things. Mm. His wisdom knowledge released mm. with insight, dreams and visions. Daniel 117, God gave the four young men, an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom. Mm. And God gave Daniel the special mm. ability to interpret the meanings of visions and dreams. So let's receive that in this new season, his mm. wisdom, knowledge and insight, especially the dreams and visions and understanding the word. And then it, she said, we are to be led by the GPS of God, God's power system, <coughs> not the global political system, Come on. but God's power system. Mm -hmm. For the Lord said his per timing is perfect mm -hmm. and his charm changes suddenly and the enemies tried to take us out and crush our voice. But... Then she said, remember Lana's word from January, and it was, my daughters, I've heard your cries, and I'm not late. Mm -hmm. And my timing is yes. perfect. Yes. And now I'm raising you so up good. in the empowerment of my mm -hmm. spirit like never before. Mm -hmm. And the enemy has fought hard to take you out, but I'm declaring that you yes. are rising now in the empowerment of my spirit, mm -hmm. in strength, yes. like you have never walked before. Yes. And and will, you will be restored in a moment and restored suddenly. I know you are weary, but in a moment, everything will change. Yes. And I believe 
childlike faith and understanding that we jubilee will change that that attitude and restore us. Mm. So she said she's written out a prayer even. So let's come into agreement. Lord, yes, we yes. come into agreement as watchmen yes, warriors. Yes. We pray and we thank you for the suddenly uh-huh. and the shift yes. and the change yes. to take yes. place in our lives. Yes raising us up in the Mm. empowerment of your spirit Mm. and in strength like never before to ignite us to run, to fly, to be elevated and accelerated in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow, that's great. Thank you. So we nearly done. Um. I'll, this time we do get to talk about culture and strategy. <laughs> culture, it's up. Can you plug it in, please? The power, right? This one, put your feet. Okay. Culture and strategy. And like I said, all learning to do it with our new and simple technologies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, culture and strategy. Okay, our first, one of the first things the Lord said to me about our culture was that we had to, the way we do it is simply to put, and I thought, how do we do this? And he said, put me first. It's simple. It's simple. Surrender each prayer meeting. Surrender each online he's our compare and he's our co-host and as we operate in absolute surrender to his will and his way the ways of the father um, as we do that this operating system and culture will reflect the kingdom of heaven that's how body wants our culture to look like the culture of these online families is the culture of heaven. his joy his peace his righteousness his holiness his glory we want to bring these prayer meetings out of this kingdom realm out of the glory realm and we know everything we need is in the glory so as we minister from the glory realm it's all going to just work fine. <laughs> so we're learning. And so the glory realm, the Lord said, is our backdrop and our destination. He said, call everyone into the glory realm and into the council of the king and and to receive strategy and move forward. That's the plan. We don't do anything that's just a good idea or our own idea. It's all a strategy from the glory realm, from the council of God. And in the glory realm, there's always worship. So, you know, we're asked, and we ask for our humans, we always come in worship. It's always the beginning and the end of all we do. It's the worship of God and coming in holy faith because I believe the more and more we come and we understand who he is and the the holiness of god is going to begin to penetrate all our lives so and then the that thing that he said um was we had to seek him on how to move forward and follow the directions of the holy spirit so so we know this but we we purposely put it down because that's what we want to action. We want to keep that vision before us to remember, no, we operate out of the glory realm. We, we, we come back and we settle ourselves into his presence, into his glory realm, and we speak and we operate from that realm, from his manifest presence. And then, um, and it, and Zechariah 4, 5, 6 is not by might and it's not by power, but it's by his spirit. And even yesterday online, we saw that, well, I, I woke up and the Lord just said, take some oil, take some oil, limber up your limbs, you know, get move with me. 
and then he dropped this bright big like pot of oil in front of me and said, just wow. smear yourself in it, take a hold of this oil, drench yourself in it. And then I got online and everyone was talking about oil and because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the flow of his spirit. Mm -hmm. So again, so it makes it simple, it makes it fun, it makes it, it there's joy in the house of prayer when the oil flows and when we, we live in that glory mm. realm. Um, and then he also said, start small, and I've referred this to you. He said, start small, call the young and young at heart, the, the young at heart strong troops. Mm. So the young, but the young at heart strong ones, yeah, the ones that have already been on the battlefield that know how to fight. Both are important, yep. the young and the young at heart. Don't make it easy. Mm. Don't make it flashy or cute. Don't pump it up. Mm. That's why there's no big razzmatazz. I was going to invite all these guests online and have people getting zoomed in and out. No, no. Make it gritty, raw, real, and in your face for those who are serious about seeing the prophetic word mm. realized. That's what it's about. It's about summoning the truth. Mm. But we're going to have lots of fun all in the world. <laughs> so, mm. and our catch cry is so that so our eyes may see. see. We want to see yes. him in his glory. Yes. We want to yes. see his miraculous. We want mm. to see revival. Yeah, amen. That our eyes may see. see. And, and as watchmen, we have to see. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That our eyes mm. may mm. see the future and call it forth. Very good. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So, um, I think I've got to the end of the page. Okay. Just hit the okay. space bar and see if there's something else there. There's something else. We've done that. Strategy. You haven't talked about that, have you? No, no, I haven't. I must put the wrong page there. So, so how are we going to do this? What is our strategy? And, and let's be practical for a while. So our strategy is we're going to have monthly interactive Zoom calls. So once a month, we're going to actually have a Zoom call. They're just going to be for an hour. This Zoom call is going to, we're going to set the theme each month by using the Hebrew calendar for prophetic insight, along with study and dreams and prophetic words. And we'll be using that as a basis for our weekly meetings for the rest of the month. And, and at the will pray into that and call that into being in that month. And uh, so we're going to be online every week, just for an hour on Friday mornings. And um, the Lord said very specific, just an hour. And we're going to pray together. We're going to um, be as interactive as we can. So we're going to invite you to, you know, comment in chat rooms and to pray and to and to just to, together um, move this prayer forward and, and we're going to release strategic decrees and declarations mm -hmm. in this time. And then there'll be the weekly call where we'll worship and pray, um, continued prophetic release and further words given. Again, an opportunity to pray and decree together and um, make no declarations. We're going to have a recording process. Mm -hmm. So as people send in words, they um, will be able to to put up, the, pull together mm -hmm. the theme and what's happening and send it out via email and it will also be on Facebook so that you can just access it very simply on Facebook. The, mm -hmm. the strategy God's <coughs> given us for the month, the prophetic word and and what we're praying. And um, and then we get the opportunity when the Lord calls us to any other specific assignment um, in a nation or nations, mm. he might have specific assignments for us. 
and then we get the opportunity to do extra prayer online as he calls us together for that and that will just be however he, he tells us to do it. Um, and so our goals, <laughs> our goals are to feed, we want to we want to get those prophetic words mm -hmm. out to, and disseminate them for direction and encouragement for prayer warriors and watchmen across the Pacific. Um, we want to encourage those already on the front line, um, encourage the troops, again, using the process of the meetings, anyone's welcome online with us just to, to even to sit there and, and say, oh, yes, that's my prophetic word too. Yes, I'm agreeing with that. Yes, I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. You know, you, how many of us do that? You look to others and just go, mm -hmm. Lord, and we're hearing right. And here's other people say the same thing. And, you know, yeah, yeah, we're catching it. Um, so we're going to, that, that's going to be one of the functions. Mm -hmm. of, and we, we do want to provide training and, and equipping eventually. Um, just the, the monthly is a training and equipping, um, but we'll continue to to do that and and have mentoring and small groups if, if that for emerging watchmen as as that happens. Um, and we want to encourage, as I said before, other companies of watchmen to be raised up and aligned with their apostles so that everyone is moving forward with direction. Okay. So um, that's about it. I, I want to finish with the encouragement. So there's the details. Um, we have online Zoom call at Friday. I hope those online can see this. Take your phone out or something, get a screenshot of it. We'll, we'll contact them. Um, so here's the online Zoom call. There's the, it begins next Friday, the 18th of the 2nd. Um, there's the link and the meeting ID. Um, we have a Facebook page called Watchman Warriors. It's a new page. Bible. It's a new page. You have to go looking for it. There's no longer a Shift the Nation page. Um, and the email is Cheryl at artglobal.org. And so you can just write in, you can ask questions, whatever you want, and, um, and send in dreams, send in visions, send in prophetic words. Um, so they're the details. Anyone got that? Again, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible, but effective as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we'll continue to do that. We, we want to finish um, just with some worship, just with some fun. Before we do, I just had a quick encouragement. The Lord took me the other day way up high on this huge mountain. I felt a I thought I was at the mount on the mountain, on a high mountain on earth, and then I realised I was way up in a high mountain in heaven. And um, and the Lord and I were there, and we just kind of looking out, and there was no horizon because we were so up high. And I'm like, I wonder where I am. And I kind of looked and turned my back backwards, and and I realised I was sitting up with the Lord on the edge of this huge precipice. And it was, and all I could see there were the fires of hell. It was black and there was fire. But I saw across the, the opening of this huge cavern just ropes, just very fine, like a net, just the, with some webbing across, just very fine and very big, looked like very big holes. But the longer I sat there with the Lord and the more we just looked out, it, it, the the I kept looking at this webbing and the, the netting got more and more thick and the ropes got more and more solid and it, it weaved closer and closer and closer and I heard the phrase it's hard to go to hell in this place and 
And remember the old revivals? They used to say that some of the, the revivals, some of the little old towns in America, they would say, it's hard to go to hell in this place. And I feel like that's the sort of thing that as we pray, as we watch with the Lord, I was just watching with the Lord. That's who we are, we're watchmen. Watching with the Lord as we call forth what he's saying and doing, this revival is going to emerge before us mm-hmm. and it's going to be hard for people mm-hmm. to go to hell. Amen. That's what we believe. <laughs> now I'm going to get Bruce, if you will, to come and share for us. Well, it's great to be together with you all today and those online. Um, there's actually 12 in the room and there's, an, and there's seven that's been online with us the whole time. And um, the wonderful thing, oh, I just want to say quickly, the wonderful thing, yeah, we've been very bold by taking it all, yeah, this ministry all online. But the most amazing thing is it just opens up the opportunity for people to participate from all over the nation, including our team, which is in multiple locations around Queensland and beyond. Um, we've got somebody in Melbourne, Lynn Johnson, online with us this morning, and Katie from you know, New South Wales, so it just enables that to happen. Um, just for a few minutes, I just wanted to share very, very briefly what the Lord spoke to me about um, for 2022, and then also a very specific word that Cheryl already touched on that God gave me early in the week. Uh, <clears throat> and so the scripture God gave me in um, 20, in the beginning of 2022 was John 2022. I'm going to read it to you. And Jesus and it says, the disciples were together and the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them. So he comes through the doors, even though they're locked. Peace be with you. So he says peace to them. Shalom. Mm-hmm. And after this, he showed them his hands and his sides and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw them. And then he says again, again Shalom. So he says it twice. Mm-hmm. Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Mm-hmm. And then verse 22, and with that he breathed on them and mm-hmm. said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Lord spoke very clearly to me that this is a year of us receiving the breath of God. Amen. In fact, Brian Simmons' translation says, Receive the sacred breath of God. Mm-hmm. Now, I've actually heard an international prophet speak on this scripture mm-hmm. this year. And he goes on to say, well, it's all to do with the same breath that was manifested in Acts chapter 2 with the power of Pentecost. But Brian Simmons says it's not. It's a different word in the Greek. Mm. It's the only other place in the Bible where when Jesus breathed on the disciples, a new life came. Mm. And the disciples basically got born again at that stage. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but it's in the book of Genesis when God breathed his breath um, into us, into humankind. And um, Brian Simmons talks about that. He says it's the beginning of new creation life, the breath of God. And not to be confused with Acts chapter 2, but the breath of Jesus. And so the breath of Jesus for, 20, for 2022 is for life. And so I want to encourage you to receive the sacred breath. Look for it. Look for it. Have peace as your operating system. Yes. We've picked up an amazing book that's just so transformed um, my life in the last, um, my operating system. It's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry um, by John Mark Comer. I've read it twice now and I've got it on an audible. I've listened to it three times. And he talks about having an operating system out of a place of peace mm-hmm. and then refusing to hurry, refusing Amen. to be in stress, mm-hmm. refusing. But everything comes out of peace. Mm-hmm. Everything comes out mm-hmm. so not you don't react, you don't get upset, you don't. So I'm a work in progress with this. My wife knows this, that every morning, my beginning of my day, my operating system is one of peace and I have to catch myself. No, I respond out of peace mm-hmm. now. But more importantly, so the peace out of that comes then the position for us to receive the breath of God, the life of God, operate in the life of God. And once you start to do this, you know, tremendous things happen. I mean, Cheryl, you know, she's a remarkable woman of God. I mean, just recently she had somebody say to her, when she's getting her nails done, um, you're the kindest, you have kind eyes, you're the you have the kindest eyes that I've ever seen. So you know, people sitting there doing your nails, they have lots of time to look at you. 
you know, and she, then she went on to say, she, this lady was a, a Buddhist. She said, if you had one thing to tell me about the secret to happiness, what would it be? Mm-hmm. You know, what an opportunity. Yeah. Why? Because of Cheryl's operating system. See, this is what we give like up. So earlier in the week, I was just in the Word, um, and I was in um, Exodus, um, around, and look, reading about the, the Ten Commandments, the New Covenant, and, the, and one of the commands God gave um, his people, Exodus 27, 20, command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives. And the Spirit of God really went whew, like that. And I heard him say, it's not good enough to have the oil of the Holy Spirit. This is a time of revival. You need clear oil. Wow. You need clear oil. And it only comes from what? The breaking down, the pressing of the olives. Years ago, an amazing man of God in Australia said in the 1980s that every Christian, for us to truly fulfill our God destiny, we have to have a Gethsemane. And he said, Gethsemane, why is that important? It is the place of the olive press. It's the place where the oil comes out. But the oil come, We want the joy of the Lord. It's so important. But we don't want the pain. We don't want the suffering. We don't want the persecution. That We don't want the hardship. But I have learned and that in the midst of being diminished, often, you know, I've had people in the last 12 months say, well, you know, obviously ARC's being diminished right now, your meetings aren't happening publicly. And I'm just totally good with that. I'm totally at a place, not only at peace, but I'm saying, sure, I get it now. Because you know what's coming out? Clear oil. Mm. You know, the, the olives are being pressed. Mm. You know, I tell you, and guess what pure oil does? When it's it, what does it start? The clear oil starts, speaks of clean soul, a free mind, mm. an undivided soul, mm. living in humility. Mm. Um, it brings you to a place where you can say, Lord, not my will, but you will be done. Mm. So I'm not chasing a big ministry anymore. It used to be like that. I'm pursuing an oil that's pure Mm. and so that our lamps will keep burning and our light needs to burn bright and i've discovered something about oil because my wife loves olive oil we have in our pantry i think the last time we had six different types of olive oil and uh, different flavors and different things in it Um, but i've learned this about olive oil though the cleaner the oil the brighter the light and so um, earlier in the week, um, I read from, um, I'll get this right now, sorry. I, I was reading about the ten virgins of Matthew 10. And um, basically, you know, it was all about the oil, wasn't it? The need for, to have oil. And um, my heart was just so encouraged because I just realized that it's not just having an amount of oil. Um, it's actually, um, the parable is actually about being wise. Mm. And it was not just oil, but those with the pure, clear oil mm. were the ones whose lamps would burn the longest and the brightest and the hottest. Mm. And so we want this revival not just to be hot, we want it to be long. Mm. Okay. And, you know, Catherine, we've been going to Catherine Renola's um, meetings recently, and I tell you, there is a genuine spirit of revival there in Glory City. And we've talked, Catherine and and us, we've talked personally about this. We want this to continue. We want want it to not last nine months like the Welsh Revival did. We want want it to last more than two years like Azusa Street did, you know. And so, um, but we have to be prepared to, to pay the price of getting to through the old press. So I hope that encourages you in a strange sort of way. <laughs> Let me, I don't think it's a negative thing. I'm not talking about pain. I'm not talking about persecution. I'm talking about saying yes. Uh, I'm talking about whatever it costs. And so, yes, it is my 65th wedding, wedding anniversary, no, birthday today. <laughs> and um, I, I put up on Facebook um, a little thing. I'm not retiring, I'm refiring, because the Lord said to me years ago, I don't want you to retire, I want you to refire. Wow. And I tell you, to have fire, you have to have oil. Mm. 
Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to pray. So Father, thank you for this mm-hmm. opportunity. Thank you for all the words from the prophets coming about the new oil, the fresh oil. Mm-hmm. Now we also ask for clear oil, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask for pure oil in mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. not just out of heaven, but Lord, that you would do that in us. Mm-hmm. And as Jesus was prepared to say, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, as John the Baptist was said, I must decrease, so he must increase. Mm-hmm. Father, we repent of chasing our own ministries or opportunities or even yes. ease yes. in life. And Lord, we say yes to whatever it takes now to burn for you. Yes. Lord God, to be instruments of fire. Mm-hmm. Lord, let your oil, Lord, in yes. us be clean and clear. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, we're going to go out with joy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, um, yes, that means you need to go out with joy. I, with the, I need yeah. to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how. There we go. That's it there. You got it. There we good go. job, darling. I'm impressed. There we go. <laughs> Can you make it full screen? Bottom right. That's it. Oh, I can.
Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 